Amazon is in talks with Verizon, T-Mobile, and Dish to get access to wholesale prices and then offer a low price, $10 per month or for free, to Prime members. Amazon Prime members might be in for a new perk, phone plans. I need to know, am I about to switch? They've gone through a transformation of truly trying to be in our lives every minute of every day. Amazon has come a long way from just selling books online. Rumors are swirling about their next step towards their path of world domination. They are now running through the big telecoms. Yep, Bloomberg is reporting that Amazon is now looking at getting into the mobile phone business, looking to offer phones as part of their Prime program for somewhere between $10 a month or possibly even free. This had the big telecom share prices puking, but it doesn't end there. Amazon is also about to start offering internet just like Starlink via a satellite project known as Project Kuiper. So if you hate big telecoms, I got good news. It appears that Amazon is in the process of displacing them. Let's dive in. Now, don't quote me on this, but Jeff Bezos is sitting in a dark room somewhere, stroking a white cat and laughing maniacally as he plots world domination, or at least for now, the mobile market. According to Bloomberg's latest scoop, Amazon's been working to partner with Verizon, T-Mobile, AT&T, or Dish Network like they're in a secret society. Talks have reportedly been ongoing for up to eight weeks, but Amazon hasn't sealed the deal just yet. Apparently, Amazon is looking to score wholesale prices so low it'd make Black Friday deals blush. Now, why should you, the esteemed Prime member, care about this cloak and dagger rendezvous? Hold on to your wallets because if Amazon has its way, Prime members could get wireless plans for a $10 a month fee or maybe even for free. That's like paying for free shipping and getting a mobile plan as a freebie. Amazon is basically saying, here, have a mobile plan on us. It seems Prime memberships are in need of a superhero as they've been treading water ever since the annual subscription price got beefed up $20 to $139 a month. Amazon thinks that by tossing in a mobile device, they'll have subscribers clinging to their memberships like barnacles on a ship's hull. And what about the mobile market? Well, Amazon is trying to make new friends by giving away candy, but the other kids, Verizon, AT&T, T-Mobile are not pleased. Post Bloomberg report, their stocks were seen nosediving faster than a hungry falcon. Verizon by 5%, AT&T by 5.9%, and T-Mobile by 6.8%. Their multi-billion dollar 5G investments have them cornered, so begrudgingly, they might have to play along. But let's take a quick trip down memory lane. Remember Amazon's $200 Fire Phone from 2014? And we built a better phone for Amazon Prime members. Well, I'm excited to tell you that the answer is yes. They ended up discontinuing it around a year later, faster than a candle in a windstorm. But with the mobile market and Prime subscriptions as the stakes, Amazon is back at the poker table, ready to go all in. But if you've been paying attention, mobile phones isn't the only area that Amazon has big telcos freaking out about. Let's dig into Project Kuiper, Amazon's answer to the age-old question, how can we provide fast, affordable broadband to communities around the world that are currently unserved or underserved by traditional internet and communication options? This is a rare opportunity. You know, the impact that Project Kuiper has on the lives of people is really unprecedented at the scale. Picture this, thousands of satellites swarming in low Earth orbit linked to a global network of antennas, fiber, and internet connection points on the ground like bees around a honeypot, buzzing with the promise of internet connectivity for everyone, even grandma in her cabin in the woods. Project Kuiper is basically Amazon playing Oprah. You get broadband and you get broadband, everybody gets broadband. And yeah, it's basically Bezos' answer to Musk's Starlink, which is basically the same thing. Now, how does this cosmic puzzle fit together? Well, if Amazon has their way, there's gonna be over 3,200 satellites in space once this project's completed. Amazon has so far secured a whopping 77 heavy lift launches with companies like Ariana Space, ULA, and to no one's surprise, Blue Origin, with an option to do a total of 27 launches with Jeff Bezos' space company. Customers, meanwhile, get these nifty terminals, blending antennas and processors into one sweet package. But wait, there's more. Amazon is flexing its muscles with AWS ground stations, AKA the secret sauce. They can link their constellation directly back to the internet using their own infrastructure. AWS uh, has a commanding lead in the cloud right now, in fact, if, if you add up number two, three, four, and five 
uh, they add up to what AWS does. Now, the million dollar question. When can you binge watch your favorite shows from a cabin in the middle of nowhere? Well, each of the rockets that Amazon is relying on to launch Kuiper are at least two years behind schedule. And on top of that, the challenge most new rockets face is not just getting to the launch pad for the first time, but scaling to launch multiple rockets a year. Amazon has never put anything into space, so that's the first challenge. But according to Amazon's page, they are preparing to launch the first two prototype satellites in mid-2023 and expect to provide service to the earliest Project Kuiper customers by the end of 2024. Their FCC license demands, though, they get at least half their satellite constellation up and running by July 2026. So, tick-tock, Mr. Bezos. Tick-tock, tick-tock. Now let's dive into the juicy part. How's Amazon space shenanigans going to affect the customer? First things first, let's talk about money. Amazon's being as secretive about their pricing as a cat hiding its favorite toy. They say affordability is their mantra, but what does that mean in real terms? For context, the average American satellite internet plan nowadays costs around $110 a month. In comparison, cable or fiber averages around $50 a month, which makes satellite internet the Louis Vuitton of connectivity, but a far worse product. Of course, the average cable plan is hard to get if you live too far from a city. The plan is intended for folks in the countryside or up in the mountains or people chilling on an island. You know, places where cable companies fear to tread. However, before we get ahead of ourselves, let's spill some tea on the downsides. Satellite internet's latency is like the one friend who's always late to the party. And then there are data caps, which are just as fun as running out of coffee on a Monday morning. And of course, we have to touch on weather. A bit of rain in your connection might be about as stable as Andy Dick. Andy Dick. And it's not exactly like the industry is competition free. In one corner, we have Elon Musk's Starlink with 3,500 satellites and counting. They're offering speeds that range from 20 to 250 megabytes per second, depending on how many users are in the area. And there's a one terabyte data cap with prices that make you question if you need that second kidney. Uh, yeah, this is crazy. A lot of people don't realize this, but SpaceX has created a system where literally you take this satellite dish and you can just leave the cord sprangled on the ground as long as you plug it into some sort of power. The thing will give you fast internet. This has never happened before in history. Now, according to CNBC, SpaceX charges $110 per month for its baseline internet service, and customers have to pay $600 just to have that Starlink satellite dish. SpaceX has disclosed last year that it cost the company around $1,300 for each of its antennas, meaning that they subsidize roughly half the price of the Starlink hardware to deliver the service to customers on the ground. As a side note, SpaceX has also suggested that they may get into the mobile phone space through the use of its low orbit satellites. Another reason for big telecoms to get nervous. And in another corner, we have HughesNet and Viasat. HughesNet has two satellites and currently boasts a subscriber count of 1.3 million users. They provide internet speeds of up to 25 megabytes per second, accompanied by a data cap ranging from 15 to 100 gigabytes per month. The monthly prices for their services range from 50 to $150. Viasat, on the other hand, operates with four satellites and has a subscriber base of 600,000. They offer internet speeds ranging from 12 to 150 megabytes per second, with data caps from 40 to 500 gigabytes per month. The monthly prices for their services range from 70 to $300. There's also a few other players in the space depending upon your region, such as Explore for my fellow Canadians, but you get the gist of it by now. And now enter Amazon, late to the party, but determined to outshine. They delayed launching their constellation, but plan to put out 3,200 satellites and optical links just like SpaceX. Although Amazon has not yet revealed how much its internet service will cost, it has disclosed that Kuiper satellite antennas are going to cost under $500 a piece. Now, here's the kicker. Amazon is like the rich uncle who can afford to go nuts at Christmas. They're swimming in cash and are expected to spend a casual $10 billion on this satellite fiesta. But when your entire company is dropping $60 billion a year on capital expenditures, that's like one of us buying a new mirror or end table. The plot twist, integration. Amazon could bundle mobile services with Prime memberships like a telecom peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Picture this, you're binge watching Murdoch Mysteries and the next thing you know, you've got seamless home internet and mobile services with your Prime subscription. So let's wrap it up. Amazon now wants to be your mobile carrier, your satellite internet provider, and your one-stop shop for everything from toilet paper to movies. 
Google, not to be outdone, is over here coupling YouTube with NFL games like wine and cheese. Big telecoms, well, they've been hoarding media, wireless, and internet like a squirrel with nuts. But in walks Amazon, more like Godzilla, bundling everything together like a techno Santa Claus. Sure, their path to wireless will require someone to agree to cannibalize their business to sell wholesale against the entire industry, but just wait, it's coming in one way, shape, or form. And of course, in the world of the internet's next evolution, cloud computing and edge computing are going to be pivotal to how devices work and the services we choose to use. Guess who has that covered? You got it, Google, Amazon, and Microsoft. And let's not forget, Google and Amazon are practically taking over American homes with their fancy gadgets. And with 5G in the mix, they're pretty much doing a conga line on the graves of big telecom. But before we get too giddy on the downfall of our beloved telecoms, let's remember, Amazon is the same company that installed their toilets on angles to make employees uncomfortable with the idea of using the John to take breaks. And then you might be asking, why does Amazon want to connect the developing world? Is it that altruistic quest to bridge the digital divide? Nah, more like here, have some internet so you can buy my stuff. It's like that friend who helps you move, but then you owe them pizza and beer for the rest of your life. And what about antitrust? At what point does the government step in and say, hey, Amazon, you might want to slow down on the whole world domination thing. I don't know. Perhaps they're just waiting for Bezos to become an actual Bond villain. In the end, we're probably just trading one big evil for another. The new world may see you get to watch Prime on the moon, but guess what? You'll have to order your spacesuit through Amazon Prime. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the future, where Amazon doesn't just deliver to your door, but beams right into your brain. Take it all with a smile, because that drone that's going to soon be hovering outside your window sure will be. All right, everybody, thank you for watching. Let me know what you think in the comment section. Do you think that Amazon will actually move forward with getting into the mobile space? Do you think that the mobile providers actually want to uh, give them whole wholesale prices? Or do you think that it's just going to be one of them who breaks and finally offers them a great package? What do you think? You think you think Amazon Prime's even worth the $139 you got to pay for it? All right, everybody, do me a big favor. Please hit that like button, subscribe, ring that notification bell. I love you all. So guys, we just recently launched this channel and we noticed that 99.9% .9 of our viewers are not subscribed. So if you enjoyed this video, we need your help in growing this channel. By subscribing, that would help us keep the lights on and make sure that our crews have jobs in these uncertain times. So please hit that subscribe button and we promise to make more quality videos that I'm sure you're gonna love.